Good afternoon. Um, I'm City Councilor Marianne Lavarge from Ward 6, and I would like to call this meeting to order. Our first order of business is the appointment and swearing in of Mary L. Medore, Clerk of the City Council. Swearing in will be done by our City Clerk, Wendy Mosna. Wendy? We need a motion. I need a motion. I, I, I need a motion. that we uh, recognize Mary, uh, that we appoint Mary Madura as the uh, secretary for the council. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And the ordinances of the city of Northampton. And the ordinances of the city of Northampton. To the best of my knowledge and ability. To the best of my knowledge and ability. Congratulations, Mary. Here. Okay. Um, I'd like to call for a motion to open nominations for City Council President. So moved. I make a motion to nominate Bill Dwight. Wait a second. I need that motion. Second. Okay. To open nominations? Yes. Okay. Mr. Dwight. Yes. 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 Mr. Yes. I nominate um, Bill Dwight as our Council President. Second. And we got Jesse Adams who second that. I, I, can I speak to that? I think Bill did a, a great job. I want to thank him for doing it. I hope you will do this again. I hope you win. Um, and I've really appreciated the work you've done. I thought you did a really fine job in the last term. So thank you. And my reasons for nominating Bill Dwight as our council president, I think because of our new charter and the change in our city council now without our mayor being the chair, I think you had a big task and I think you've done well with it. And I feel very dedicated to you as a city councilor because I know what you can do and what you cannot do. And I appreciate all the hard work that you've done. Thank you. Okay. A move to close nominations? Second. Yes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. He's got it coming. Yeah, we I need a roll call first. We didn't give you a chance. Okay, we need to do a roll still, call. He can still um, speak to his. Oh. I, I was just closing. Oh. Nomination. Could, could, could I speak to the nomination? Um, um, I, I, thank you. I'm grateful for the prospect and, and the opportunity to become council president again. Um, I, I think most of you know I was, I was a reluctant council president last time and have since come to appreciate the position, particularly under the, under the, uh, the guidelines of the new charter. And I think um, in, in any success that I may have had was simply due to the, the cooperation and kind, kindness of the, my fellow councilors. It was uh, everyone um, conducted themselves with great patience and respect, and that was great. So that's, that's not a very difficult job, ultimately. But I think, I mean, what I would like to do as president is uh, demystify governance, particularly municipal governance, to make people understand that we're neighbors, we're your friends, mostly. I mean, sometimes people might not consider us that, but the fact is that I remember when I used to approach a con the city council before I got involved in the city government, it used to terrify me. My heart would go into palpitations and I, you know, just looking at this august body. And I realized that, that whatever we do to project that is not, doesn't help us necessarily. And I think so that's, I mean, I think given the fact that we, we worked so well last term, I anticipate and hope that uh, 
will have the same success this term. So thank you for your nomination and your second, Councillor Adams, and, and, and your kind words, Councillor Specter. So. Um, I also want to express my appreciation for Councillor Dwight, not only for uh, serving last term as president, but willing to serve again. Um, and especially uh, the ability with which he managed this, uh, this council's deliberative process, the way, because it's not easy. It, um, sometimes, as we've heard it, like uh, herding cats but also the leadership that he's shown um, for this council and for our responsibility in this, uh, in this government. So happy to support Council. Thank Lula. you. Got it. Okay. So we need to do a call for a roll call to elect Bill Dwight for city council president. Councilor Adams. Dwight. Councilor Carney. Councilor Dwight. Councilor Dwight. Councilor Dwight. Councilor Klein. Councilor Dwight. Councilor Labarge. Councilor Dwight. Councilor Murphy. Councilor Dwight. Councilor O'Donnell. Councilor Dwight. Councilor Sciarra. Councilor Spector. Councilor Dwight. That's it. Okay. We change chairs now, so. This is yours. I take this, Mr. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Oh. Thank you. Very formal ceremony. Ah. Thank you all. Thank you. Um, okay. I fit in the seat. Counselors new and old, before you, uh, is, before I get underway, you have a new collection of recyclable materials here that, before you. Um, this is your counselor kit that Mary Medora puts together. Uh, and by the way, so there's, in, in, in the interest of demystifying everything, actually everything in city government is run by Mary Medora. <laughs> um, <laughs> the meetings go because Mary, if we didn't, if Wendy didn't swear in Mary Medora, the city would collapse. So, um, you will, I think, do they have their placards? Yes. It's in, it's in the there kit? Oh. oh, you already got your pack. Okay. Mm -hmm. the, the, the parking the, placards? The parking placards. Very important. No yeah. Parking placards are only to be used while doing city business, um, not visiting bars at off hours, which some councilors have used in the past, but the, we've changed that rule. Um, so while you're conducting city business, maybe with constituents or having meetings, you can find a parking space, the placard will be a very comforting thing to have, um, particularly on a day like today. Um, but you don't use it during off hours and don't use it, just don't abuse it, please. <laughs> Thank you. So, um, yeah, would you? That'd be great. Mary's gonna break down your counselor kit for you. We have um, the listing of every counselor and your information. If there's anything wrong or you want to change email at, or phone numbers or anything, just let me know. The schedule of meetings, which we'll vote on shortly. The rules and orders, which we'll vote on shortly. And I just want to bring to your attention that the Committee on Hearings, Investigations, and Practices was passed with three members being appointed to it. No amendment was made at the last meeting to change that. There was an amendment that was discussed to, to only appoint the chair, but we never voted on it. Mm -hmm. So it would be something to consider today. I'm sorry. Then you have um, information for open meeting law, conflict of interest law, and online training certificates, which you'll need to complete. And please return to me by February 7th, 30 days. The open meeting law is very simple. You just sign the certificate of receipt because the open meeting law is printed and in, in your book. The acknowledgement of the summary of conflict of interest law is also simple because that's printed and in, in your book. 
And then the online training you you'll need to take through mass.gov and there are instructions on how to take that training. And the last thing that's in here um, is the for you to indicate which council committees you would like to be considered for, which you'll give to the council president sometime soon so that he can start deciding who will be on which committees. And Councilor Labarge did point out to me that the uh, Commission on Disability needs a counselor, but that person is not a non-voting liaison that is a full voting member. And then you have um, information that was actually given to us two years ago by Councilor Dwight about supermajority votes, uh, how to do an executive session, why to do an ex executive session, and the actual charter, and some MMA materials. I've invited the city solicitor for our next actual meeting uh, to come and give us a primer on uh, open meeting law and um, so we can all be up to speed on that and we, it's certainly helpful to have a refresher. The, the ethics, it's called an ethics test, although it's, you take it until you, until you pass it. So it's not, it's not particularly challenging. Although, interestingly enough, the Hadley Police Department, the police chief, gave the answers to his department, somehow not understanding the concept of ethics and what you're being tested for. So um, don't sweat it. Don't stay up all night cramming for it. It's actually it's, it's more designed to educate you on the nuance of uh, at least Massachusetts' perception of what ethics are, at least as what Mass General Law stipulates. Um, we're, our next order of business, I, I actually, and while we're still in the informal stage, I'd like to acknowledge the three new counselors that have joined us, and I'm going to struggle to pronounce all their names correctly. <laughs> Alisa Klein, Gina Louise Chiara, Ryan O'Donnell. <laughs> <laughs> You say it better than my family. <laughs> uh, thank you all very much. I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to working with you, and I know the other council share that uh, feeling, and I'm, I'm really excited about the prospects. And, um, and we will exercise patience, and hopefully you will as well, as you guys try to find your sea legs and you know, figure out how. It, it, you, uh, you'll also be getting a copy of Robert's Rules of Order, which you should have on your desk. Um, the is that the which which edition is that? Oh, it's the most okay. Yours is shinier compared to ours. The uh, the is the same edition. Is the same edition? They just have a shinier. Cover. Oh, eleven. <laughs> oh, we have a tenth. I have a tenth. It's ours. Oh, okay. In any event, the council we abide by Robert's rules of order. We actually refer to it, but what takes precedence is the council rules that have been established in on order. When there's a question, we refer to Robert's rules. Uh, uh, essentially, our uh, the, I, and I've forgotten the official term for uh, the person who understands parliamentarian. The parliamentarian. Parliamentarian. Our unofficial parliamentarian has been Councillor Adams, which actually now leads me to our next item on the agenda, which is calling for the election of the vice president of the city council. Uh, and we will open it up the floor for nominations. Don't, don't we need to move? Uh, Can we go straight into nominations or we need to move it? Uh, yeah, actually move to open nominations. Move, move to open nominations. I move to well, I'll a second. second. I'll okay. second that. Okay. All those in favor of opening nominations, please aye. say aye. 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 Okay. And Councillor Labarge. Yes. Um, I would like to nominate Jesse Adams as our city council vice president. Second. A nomination and a second. Any other nominations? Any discussion on the nomination? Any comments on the nominee? I think you might uh, have Council to. Council Labarge? Um, I am definitely supporting Jesse Adams as our City Council Vice President. I think he's done a fantastic job with all the ordinances, working through the charter and so forth. And I know even with quite a bit of my residents who have called him, he was immediately on the phone calling them back. I really like what you've done 
this last term, Jesse, and I feel that you should be our city councilor vice president. Uh, I would also like to speak to the, the nomination. Councilor Adams uh, was instrumental, as Councilor Barge pointed out, in the development of the new charter from, from the original discussions leading up to the process, involved in the process, and then involved in the deliberation and of and establishing the charter. He's also instrumental in redesigning and streamlining the council rules and council committees, which um, at times were just a little clunky. And also the biggest challenge coming from the fact that um, some of the rules were in conflict of the existing, the new charter system. This is, I mean, you know, <laughs> There weren't too many people we could call on to try and negotiate and navigate how we were going to reconcile the old rules with the new charter. And Councillor Adams has devoted uh, energy, thought, and, and came up with good solutions to the challenges that were met. And I think that uh, he's a very able vice president. And, and I hope at some point to give him the opportunity to sit in this chair when I'm absent so that he can smack a gavel a couple of times. So. <laughs> He's going to have to go on vacation or something, or have a conflict of interest. Um, are there any other comments on the nomination, or anyone interested in uh, forwarding any other nominations? Move to close nominations. Second. Nominations have been there's a motion to close nominations. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Mayor, would you call the roll call for? Just, just briefly. Yes, please. Just, just one thing, a couple things I'd like to say is um, um, thank you. Um, I've been happy to do it, and I'd be happy to do it again for the next term. Um, what I'd like to do is if, um, if there are further need for it to reconsider the rules, I'd be happy to take a lead role on that or work with any counselors. And also, um, being that we're giving the, the new committee structure a, a, a chance, uh, if if there is if there are any any concerns if it isn't functioning up to the councilors' expectations, I'd be happy to work with the councilors and the council president to, to to try to reconfigure them or get them right. So, thank you very much. Mayor, would you call the roll, please? Councilor Carney. Councilor Adams. Councilor White. Councilor Adams. Councilor Klein. Councilor Adams. Councilor Barge. Councilor Adams. Councilor Murphy. Councilor Adams. Adams. Councilor Adams. Adams. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. All right. The, um, oh, that's where we now have to appoint the enrollment committee. Um, and I w and is that actually require nominations and elections? No. 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 I get to appoint? Yes, you do. Yo, you too. <laughs> Elisa and Jesse, you are, and what this means is it's basically you're the ones who get writer's cramps after every ordinance that we pass that you guys have to, there have to be two counselors that sign off on the appointments committee. So when we do these huge stacks of zoning changes, actually, I think zoning changes we all have to sign now. Yeah. Yes, we do. But in any, most, most of the ordinances, you, you'll just be applying your signature. Is it by virtue of the geography here? Exactly. <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, I, no, no, it's by the, the august nature of your office. That's <laughs> <laughs> and proximity to Mary Madura. Council. So that's Council. <laughs> I want the minutes to note the yo in there. <laughs> so. I nominate yo. <laughs> All right. Um, next up is the uh, City Council Joint Rules and Orders. Uh, this is upon the recommendation of the City Council. Whoop, whoop. This is upon the recommendation of the City Council ordered that the attached joint rules and ordinances and, uh, and orders be adopted for the 2014 to 2015 City Council. Second. Okay. Um, the discussion on this is probably in order, and Councilor Adams I mean, I, I, uh, spoke to this a little bit. Um, the, the, these rules are our rules. Um, these com and then the, the committees that we'll be voting on are our committees. We make them up. So this is not. We actually, so if there is difficulty with the rule, somebody finds that it, 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 it's impeding their process to legislate well, then please um, make a suggestion or recommendation to me or Councillor Adams, 
and uh, we'll work on trying to adjust that because I mean it's the purpose of these things is to actually make government work and function particularly for us so and 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 by extension all the people that we serve. <coughs> so is there any further discussion on on the rules now no okay uh, Councilor. Um, rule 34 is the duty to report rule. Uh, no, that's the timely filing. Rule. Yeah, that's the timely um, file. The duty to report rule is 31. 31, thank you. And um, it, say, it states that it shall be the duty of every committee of the council to hold an initial meeting within six months after members of the committees have been appointed. That rule used to read that um, at, once something's referred to a committee, they have, it was 60 days, I believe, to report. Right. And um, when I was making these changes, I cut that out and didn't replace it. So if we could just do that. Now, amend that? If we could amend that so that Rule 31 reads the next sentence is um, each council committee will, ha will, will report to the full council within 60 days. Of a, refer of, of a, refer of a referral. I'll, I'll second that amendment. Are there any questions about that? Um, just one, one question. I mean, occasionally we have um, times, uh, most committees meet w once a month. So occasionally we have a month where there may be nothing really pending or some other reason that the committee may not meet. And I think there have been numerous times where we may not have reported back within 60 days. So I'm wondering if that 60 days is hard and fast. Um, because it seems like our practice has been that often something might, especially if it goes over the summer or over some other holiday time. We, we can make it 90, and I, and, I, and I agree. I don't think we're always in compliance um, every time. I just, I just don't think that that rule is, you know, s something that every chair was always aware of. So is that um, a friendly change? But 90, I mean, if you want to change it to 90. Yeah, that's, and that's presently it says within six months? Did you no, say no, that? No, that, no, that's a separate part of it. That, that um, every committee has to meet within six months, but, but the duty to report when something is referred to a committee, um, that was the rule was that they have to report back to the full council within 60 days until I accidentally mm -hmm. deleted it. Well, if it's if a friendly, a friendly? Yeah, to make it nine, I think 90 days might just be more in line with what are, I mean, not that saying that things typically take 90 days, but there are many times, yeah, yeah so that we don't feel like we're inadvertently in violation of our own rules. R rather okay. than be at 60 days and call for a suspension of rules? Right, because yeah. that has to be right. at the right. full council level anyhow. Right. So that doesn't, that's kind of mixed. Right. Uh, right. Except that as a friendly okay. amendment. So did you get that, the friendly amendment to 90 days? Okay. okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? That's for the amendment. Uh, now back to the original order. All those in favor of the rules? They say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? The council has accepted the rules unanimously. That's first reading. That's first reading. Um, <clears throat> this is upon the recommendation of the city council order that the attached city council meeting schedule uh, for 2014-2015 uh, be and hereby be adopted. You should have copies of the meetings. I will read the uh, at least the tentative uh, meeting schedule that's being recommended here. Uh, the organizational meeting which you're experiencing right now. The next meeting will be January 16th, February 6th, February 20th, March 6th, March 20th, April 3rd, April 17th, May 1st, May 15th, June 5th, June 26th, um, uh, July 10th, August 14th, September 4th, September 18th, October 2nd, October 16th, November 6th, November 20th, December 4th, and December 18th. Is there, uh, first of all, I'll accept a motion? Well, I move to oh, accept these. Okay. And then second. Uh, Councilor Spector. I just have a request, just if it is not a conflict for anybody or would put them out to change the meeting of the August 14th to either the first 
to August 7th or August 21st. But if it's a problem for anybody else, that's fine. It's just since we're setting it for the whole year, and I know I have a cut. Counselor, that's just for the month of August? Yes, just that one, that one time. So you want to change you want to change the August 14th one to I will yeah to either the any other time in August would be fine with me but again that is just a personal request and if anybody else has any problem with that date I would withdraw that request um, for the new counselors we meet twice a month with the exceptions of July and August where we meet once a month and then we can also call emergency sessions if need be uh, um, just um if we're looking at August, I'm typically not here in that last. So you're talking about maybe switching it to the first? Any other but August 14th. Well, if it works. Only the first is a Friday. I mean, the first, the the first Thursday. First Thursday. August, the seventh. Which would be the seventh. Right. Anyway, the seventh, the seventh 14th. Would be a month first. after. would be a month after July's meeting. Any preferences? My wife is giving me a thumbs down from the audience. I don't know what that's for, though, but you're not allowed to deliberate. <laughs> uh, any other thoughts on the, on the, <laughs> on the meeting? Uh, as Can I said, we give the, counselors, a, you know, a, another two weeks to look that over? And I mean, is, this doesn't. I mean, I, 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 this is away. one meeting. So right. if, if, I mean, I have no objections and, um, you know, the, the the biggest point is trying to get a quorum to show up. And so if everyone uh, has any knowledge this far besides Councilor Specter, I don't, uh, you know, no. So what's, uh, uh, Councilor Barch? Right. I look at it this way. No matter what, we're scheduled for a meeting. If you cannot attend the meeting, then you're not here. We do book. A month of July and August. Usually it's the third Thursday of the month, but because of the budget hearing, that's why it was booked earlier for the month of July. I don't have a problem with changing the time, and if somebody has a vacation booked, then they're not here. Council, Park, uh, Council Adams. Also, one of the things I like to do is um, I spoke with Councilor Dwight about this. Actually, it was his idea to adopt the, the, the state law that allows for remote participation if, if people are away. And, and if, well, that doesn't necessarily mean they can participate remotely, but that might help if people are away and they can participate remotely. But we do have to adopt this uh, provision of the state law before we can do that. So that, that's one of the things I'd like to do. Right. Thank you. Just to Mark. clarify, um, it doesn't allow for the chair to participate remotely, if I'm well, correct, right? Well, the chair right? can't preside. But the chair can participate, can participate. Okay. as a vote, but cannot preside. Right. But yes, uh, we can actually conduct governance by Skype or other. Uh, you can you can be present via computer uh, in council meetings in the state of Massachusetts now, but it has to be adopted and approved by the council, which I think will be. That's as I'm glad Councilor Adams reminded me that that would be something, that'd be an order that we'll be discussing. Um, so that said. Uh, I, I think the request stands that the to change the August meeting. Now, Councilor Labarge brings up an interesting point because what drove the August discussion was the budget issue that was now because of the new mandates under the charter. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the July, but then we don't know what we're going to run into in August. Mm -hmm. So, Councilor Murphy. Well, in July, we, we can make changes in the previous year's budget up until the middle of July right. so that we want to meet we don't want to meet after that in case we have to tweak the previous fiscal year so we all we try and meet whatever Thursday is before that deadline so that we can make changes in the previous fiscal year that we might need to to balance the books So what's the consensus? What's everyone's, and before we take a vote, what's everyone's preference here on this? Does anyone have any objections one way or the other? No? Yeah, yeah. Why don't we do that? We'll vote this first reading, and then we'll, sure. we'll I, I, w I would like to ask the mayor if there's any issue that he'd be concerned about with 
because so. it is short meeting, but I mean, I honestly don't see a problem. But so if we could vote for this unamended in first reading, and then we, uh, the second reading will, be, of course, be at our next meeting, which, if you'll look, is on the 16th. Council Murphy. Now, is this, are we also adopting these times? <coughs> yeah, because, <laughs> yes, the times, the times are also, part it's, of the motion. That, that is part of the motion where public comment starts at 7 and the regular meeting at 7 Because we did move it forward, and I know in our last session we did have those occasions when some of us were voting that they didn't want to continue <coughs> at 11. So if our new counselors are feeling particularly long-winded, we might want to entertain a discussion of perhaps moving our start time forward so we don't run into that 11 o'clock. Uh, may I? No. So uh, speaking for myself, I'm, it's pretty, my, I'm pretty much losing it by 11. I'd rather okay. be done yeah, I, I it, just from um, what we've experienced, I don't know that it matters whether we start at 6 or 7 mm -hmm. in terms. I, I think the longer we schedule the meeting, the more time we could, the, the, it's that much time we could be here. So I, I don't know that changing it from 7 to 6.30 means that those times that we ended up here at 11, we would have ended our meeting at 10.30. Um, that's just my sense that I don't know that the start time, <coughs> you would think that it might, I don't know that the start time has that much impact on the end time. You know, we moved it to seven. I actually think, and I, we actually ended up voting more times to continue after 11. I think groups just tend to fill the time. So I, I would prefer not to move it earlier, especially to 6.30 since in public session, uh, many people are coming home from work then needing to get here. It seems like an awkward time to ask the public to show up. Um, so I'd like to keep the hours where they are and, it, it, you know, we can vote on whether to continue or not. Council LaBarge. Yes, I have to agree with my counselors. I think the 7 o'clock time is the right time. And I feel if we have to extend our city council meeting and we have to stay over another half hour or an hour, then that's the way it would be. Uh, for the new counselors, we actually, we have a, uh, the new rules you just voted on call for the meeting to end, to go no further than 11 o'clock unless we suspend rules. And it, take, it takes six counselors to, uh, to suspend that rule. And we've actually, We've actually <laughs> and then, <laughs> surprisingly yeah. without a I mean, without enough votes yeah. in the but middle of a motion. <laughs> and, and Councillor Spectrum made a good point, though. I mean, I think if we were to look at the record, we've needed to suspend rules to extend beyond 11 o'clock more times since we went to the earlier start than when we started our meeting at 7:15, actually 7:30. I, so I think it's more. A, I think it's more a, a matter of. The nature of the conversation and the people the involved of the issues. and the issues than it is the actual time. I will, and again, I, I brought it up so that we would, would have entertained the topic, but since everyone feels like that we would, in fact, fill whatever available space we were yeah. provided with, then I'll take that as everyone's commitment to be clear and concise and to the point <laughs> so we, if, if we can fill the space, we can also not fill the space and get out of here on time because I know. Um, I, we run into trouble with that extension every now and then. I would actually uh, like to ask us to consider, in our, we, you know, as as time goes on, looking at that rule in particular, mm -hmm. because I can see how, especially since it requires a supermajority, it could be used to um, to squash an issue, or you know, it could be used in the wrong way, a way that it wasn't really intended. So. Um, I, I was actually discussing this with the council president. We, we have a bunch of options. We can um, we can delete the rule, um, but you know that, that presents its own set of issues. Uh, one time, you know, you know, the last time the the there weren't enough votes to to suspend the rule, um, I moved to reconsider. We can also do that. We can move to reconsider the rule, not minority reconsideration, but reconsideration, which, which any counselor can do, and you can do it. That allows you to re-vote on the issue you just voted on. Um, and also, I'd like so to point out, too, that any counselor could move to adjourn the meeting at any time. Mm -hmm. And if that doesn't require a supermajority, that requires just a majority. So, mm -hmm. I mean, 
go, doing away with the rule itself might be something that we want to consider. Okay, well, worth discussing. That councilor. I would actually keep the rule. I think many legislative bodies, and certainly most bodies that meet and have meetings, set an agenda, and I think that it just gives you a framework. We, we really have not had that much of a problem, even that one evening when we voted not to continue. And in the years I've been here, I've never seen the rule abused in a way that to squash an issue, and the issue can always come back because it's not over. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important to kind of have a framework and say, look, this is when we try and end by. Uh, we don't have an agenda that sets, uh, you know, it's, it, it's not an agenda trying to be overly efficient by saying we'll talk about this for 20 minutes and this for 30 minutes, which is actually how many legislative bodies work. I think having some deadline to say let's try and do that, kind of recognizing it, I'd like to continue that, knowing we can always extend. Well, I, I'd like to note that our conversation about the, our length of conversations has been a long right. conversation. <laughs> 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 Councilor Murphy. Well, it, it's, I think respectful because you'll you become surprised the new members as to how many people actually are riveted to watching these meetings and it's sort of respectful of them that we're going to try and conclude our business at a reasonable time for them to keep track of what we're doing you know we're not doing things in the wee hours when the gallery's empty and we're here by ourselves and and to some extent I think we can also control it when we build our agenda you know our agenda, at least in my opinion, consists of things that are action items for the city council. And a lot of a lot of times we end up with all kinds of dog and pony shows here that might not necessarily be action items for the city council, but wind up here as a way to get them on television. Perhaps they could find other ways to do that. Are there any other thoughts on this? All right. So the rules actually as unamended, <laughs> as as presented. This is. Uh, vote on accepting these meetings and these times. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? This is first reading, and as I said, um, Council Spector will, will review the times and it's subject to modification of the second reading. Um, doo -doo -doo. Oh, okay, so you've got, you do have uh, as Mary pointed out in your packets, uh, the open meeting law materials and instructions for online training, as I said, um, and the conflict of interest law. Usually a safe bet, when in doubt, the slightest inkling of doubt, uh, defer to that doubt. That's what the State Ethics Board always says every time I've called them up with any <coughs> inkling. They always say defer to this, uh, that doubt and and unless it's really critical, it's it's probably okay to recuse yourself in a certain situation. The State Ethics Board is available for, for strange, complicated situations that you can call them, mm -hmm. uh, Councilor Murphy. If you, if you have advance warning, if you know something's coming, the solicitor has always been willing exactly. to render an opinion in advance. So sometimes it just pops up. But a lot of times if you know an issue's coming and you're wondering about your status, you can check with the solicitor in advance to say, here's my circumstance. What's your opinion? Do you think I'm okay to participate, or should I, should I not? Right. I mean, in a small town, there, uh, the fact that we all do business with each other in certain in certain levels, there's, uh, there could be construed as the appearance of, of a conflict. One point, in fact, none exists. But there are there, as as Councilor Murphy points out, there we do have um, resources in which we can refer. And barring that, then just recuse yourself or, or consider why you need to make your case. Um, and you also have the checklist, as Mary pointed out, for your committee preferences. Please um, do them hierarchically, you know, premium choices, second choices, worst nightmares, um, you know, and list them, present them to me. I'd like to get those actually done as soon as possible. Um, in the, the past when I did this, as, as my wife equated it with, is trying to do a seating arrangement for a dysfunctional family Thanksgiving. So <laughs> this is not a dysfunctional family, but the fact is that we're trying to figure out which is the most effective combination of counselors to create the, the best governance. So, Councilor, um, Councilor Murphy, did you have your hand up the whole time? Okay, I'm sorry. On, on the conflict of interest, could you speak to our new counselors for a moment about the, the rule of necessity? 
in that we can't we cannot conflict ourselves out of doing business it, it, and i think that's an important that is important and 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 it's actually the rule of necessity and i'm trying to remember what it came up last year yeah it did Mm -hmm. it came I can't around remember. the use of the health insurance. The health insurance. Oh, right. right. The health insurance. Thank you. That's right. Something I just dealt with today. By the way. I'm back on the city plan again. Um, the, the, there is a possibility that we all would have something that could be perceived as a conflict on a particular issue. Health insurance, for instance, for the city's health insurance plan. Um, the rule of necessity requires that we vote, that, that actually we actually do our job and legislate. So. Uh, thank you for pointing that out. So, but again, we did that with uh, consultation with the city solicitor. So we understand what it is that, I mean, the idea is to perform the most open, frank, and clear and un, um, unimpeded governance that we can possibly do. And there will become these really bizarre moments where we could literally be, we could feel that we're stuck and we can't vote at all. And then we are no longer an effective government. So, the other place it can come up is zoning. I mean, yes, it's exactly. possible that everyone here is a property owner, and in one way or another, new zoning would affect us all differently. Um, some positively, some ne negatively, but we still have the job. Well, there are just in, in council arms project. I speak to this. There are there are clear and direct conflicts, though. That, 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 yeah. It's just, I mean, it, but they, for example, we all vote on the tax rate, but that doesn't. That doesn't create a conflict for all of us. So there. So, in the case of zoning, it, it would have to depend. It, it really would depend on the particular potential conflict, um, and how direct and close it is, it is to the to the councilors voting on it. And again, I would say in that case, solicit the opinion of the of the, the state ethics board and the city solicitor. Mm -hmm. So. Um, and again, yes. Yeah, so uh, your committee choices. Um, I'm actually not going to grant seniority to people, and uh, I think the newest members are as entitled to uh, an opportunity for the for the committees of people consider choice as anybody else. Um, and again, my my primary intent is to craft and create the best, most functional committees. And uh, the purpose of the committees are to serve the council as a whole. And um, so, rather than appoint people based on uh, which has been done in the past on some level based on on uh, uh, you know how long they've served or how long or, or, or particular pet projects and stuff I mean that actually weighs in on the on the figuring but ultimately I think we're gonna I'm, I'm going to try to do the very best I can this is honestly the hardest part of being a council president is trying to figure this out so I'm just just trying to make my apologies up front in case there's something that goes so awry Councilor Adams. But you said you do want us to rank them. Please rank them, yes. So I so I know, so I have a better sense. It'll give me some flexibility, for instance, if if, um, if I got five people or six people want to be in finance, can't be done if that's their primary choice. And I've got to figure out what's the best way to do that. So that would be that would be very helpful. Um, is there any new business? So far, we've done pretty well. This year's starting off well. Um, thank you all very much for your uh, you. your vote, and also thank I look forward to working with, with all of you. And thank you very much uh, for this good meeting. Motion. I will accept the motion. To motion call. to adjourn. Second. All those in favor of adjourning, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions?